Hello everyone, welcome to the first workshop of the quarter. In this video, I'll show you how to make an AI that can play chess. Let's get started with a brief overview. The first thing we'll cover is our approach. There are several different ways to make an AI play chess, but I will outline two components that we will need for our particular implementation. Next, I'll define what a heuristic is and explain how we might go about determining a heuristic to use for chess. Once we've done that, we'll write the code for the heuristic evaluation function. Finally, we'll go over how the Minimax algorithm works and then write the necessary code for it while discussing possible optimizations, most notably alpha beta pruning. Our approach consists of two components. The first component is the heuristic evaluation function. We can think of it as the way to quantify how good a game state is for a given player. This means that given a board and a player, the function will output a numerical value representing how well things are going for that player. The second component is the Minimax algorithm. We can think of it as a process that selects the move which leads to the best game state after considering possible future moves. We will cover exactly how this algorithm works soon, but first, let's make sure we understand the heuristic evaluation function. So, what is a heuristic? In order to understand what a heuristic evaluation function is, it's important that we know what is meant by heuristic. A heuristic is a metric that is not guaranteed to yield perfect results, but still provides a useful approximation. An example is GPA. When a university asks for your GPA, they really want to know, is this person a good student? Since universities don't have the time nor resources to do a full-on investigation of you, they instead rely on the imperfect but useful approximation that is your GPA. Bringing it back to chess. Instead of approximating how good a student is for a university, we want to approximate how good a game state is for a given player. One possibility is material score. In this case, each piece has a weight, and to calculate a player's material score, we consider all of their pieces on the board and sum their weights. For example, given the board in the bottom right, the score for white is 950, since there is one king worth 900 and one rook worth 50. The score for black is 1020, since there is one king worth 900, one queen worth 90, and one knight worth 30. Now that we have our heuristic, let's write the heuristic evaluation function. Using an IDE of your choice, open the file named ai.py contained in the project directory. If you don't have an IDE installed, you can use the default one that comes with Python called idle, or if you want a more fully featured IDE, I would recommend PyCharm. The code for this part is pretty short. The function will have two parameters, board and maximizing color. If the maximizing color is white, then we return white score minus black score. The reason we put white score first in the subtraction is that we want a positive result to indicate that white is winning if white score is greater than black score, but we want a negative result if the opposite is true. Conversely, when we are computing the material score for black, we simply reverse white score and black score in the equation. You might also notice that we aren't using any sort of function to calculate the material score. Rather, the values are being accessed directly from attributes of the board class. This is because we already know how many of each piece will be present when the game begins. Therefore, given our weights, each player will always start with a score of 1290. Then, whenever a capture occurs, we subtract the value of that piece from the player's score. The underlying details aren't too important here. Just remember this. Both players start with a score, and every time they lose a piece, we subtract the value of that piece from their score. Now it's time to talk about the brains behind our AI, the Minimax algorithm. Consider the game state shown at the top middle of the screen. It is White's turn, and White is the maximizing player. White has two moves available to them. They can move their bishop up and to the left, or up and to the right. If they move up and to the left, we will arrive at the game state shown on the left side. If they move up and to the right, we will arrive at the game state shown on the right side. After White makes their move, it would then be Black's turn, and we would have all the resulting game states from Black's available moves. This process of looking at all the possible moves for a player, and then observing the resulting game states, continues until the depth limit has been reached, or the game has ended. Once this happens, we call our evaluation function on all of the game states at the bottom of the tree. This is where the values at the bottom of the screen came from. These values get passed up the tree based on whether they are a minimum or a maximum. In our case, at depth equals one, it is Black's turn, which means we want to pick the minimum. For the left subtree, negative 80 is the smallest child value, so it gets passed up the tree. For the right subtree, negative 50 is the smallest child value, so it gets passed up the tree. This is where the two values in the middle of the screen came from. Next, at depth equals zero, it is white's turn. 
which means we want to pick a maximum. The maximum value between negative 50 and negative 80 is negative 50, so it gets passed up the tree. This is where the value at the top of the screen came from. Now we know that the best move in our current situation would be to move the bishop up and to the right because it has the potential to lead to the most valuable game state after looking two moves ahead. With all that said, we can finally start coding the algorithm. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly, so feel free to pause the video to make sure you get everything. Here, we check if the depth limit has been reached, depth equals zero, or the game has ended, or dot game over. This is our base case where we evaluate all the game states at the lowest level so that we can start passing values up the tree. Here, we get all of the available moves on the board and initialize the best move to a random value. If we are the maximizing player, then we want to go through each move, see what the game state looks like after the move has been made, then check if the value of the resulting game state is higher than any of the ones that we've seen before. If it is higher, then we update the max eval and the best move variables accordingly. Finally, we return the maximum evaluation along with the best move. This code segment is basically identical to the one before, but we find the minimum instead of the maximum. So once again, we go through each move, see what the game state looks like after the move has been made, but this time we check if the value is lower than any of the ones that we've seen before. If it is lower, then we update the min eval and best move variables accordingly. And similar to before, we return the minimum evaluation along with the best move. And here is the code all put together. You can refer back to here if you missed anything or just want to see how the code looks when it's put together. The code that we currently have technically already works, but it can be improved using alpha beta pruning. Alpha beta pruning is a pretty complicated concept, so I won't go into too much depth here. All you need to know about it for now is that it greatly improves the performance of the minimax algorithm by avoiding going down unnecessary branches of the tree. There's an excellent video by alpha beta pruning by Sebastian Log that I will link in the description. If you want to add alpha beta pruning to your code, add these highlighted sections in green to your current code. Once again, feel free to pause the video. And that is actually the end of this workshop. Assuming you coded everything correctly, when you run the program, you will be able to play against the Minimax AI. I hope you guys found this useful, and I know it's difficult to understand all this stuff right away, so please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to message me on Discord. We can join a voice channel, and I'll walk you through any parts that you're having trouble with. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one. Take care.